Hey guys, and welcome back. Today I'm here to talk about something that has been released in one of my new favorite AAA titles, Rainbow Six Siege. Um, now, as you can see here, I'm looking through some of the available operators that I have in the game already, and the good news that I've got for you today is that we're about to get some more. So very soon there will be a DLC release uh, for the game, codenamed Black Ice. And within the new DLC will be a map that looks like a frozen yacht in some terribly cold climate conditions, along with two new operators who are specifically conditioned to these snowy settings. These two new operators are a source of some excitement as they are part of the Canadian JTF2 or Joint Task Force uh, from Canada, Ubisoft represent. So the first operator, codenamed Buck, uh, is an attack operator. Uh, his special ability is called the Skeleton Key. Uh, it uh, toggles an underbrell shotgun attachment for one of his main weapons, which is, uh, more often than not, uh, an assault rifle. So this means that if you wanted to uh, change your gameplay style from uh, CQB, close range, uh, or close quarters, um, or uh, you wanted to uh, do a little bit more, um, I guess, uh, further distance or whatever, then you can uh, switch to uh, either an assault rifle or uh, a marksman rifle. So uh, we can go through those. Now the first uh, the first weapon uh, for Buck uh, is the C8 SFW. Now this one looks like it's going to perform somewhere between uh, the R4C and the G36 that Ash has. Uh, she's in the, uh, the FBI um, uh, group, I guess. Uh, I guess you would call it. Um, it looks like it'll perform pretty uh, pretty nicely uh, without uh, a weapon attachment You can see that the recoil pattern in the bottom right hand corner um, After five shots the first being the green dot the center of the crosshairs and then one two three four other ones uh, If you put a compensator on that you can probably get all five shots hit the body at the same time with the last one landing on the head um, So not a bad recoil pattern. Uh, you can see the underbarrel shotgun. Uh, it's pretty cool uh it's a neat idea how um, how you don't really have an option to go for um, a shotgun uh, individually, but uh, rather they pair it with an assault rifle this time. So he only has one secondary and uh, the option of a smoke or a flashbang. Um, it's one or the other, I'm not sure which though. Uh, and a breaching charge, so pretty cool. Um, his second gun though, which is actually quite interesting um, to me, is the CAMRS. It's a marksman rifle. So this is actually the uh, the foul. Uh, to me, it's be better well known uh, in the Call of Duty series. Um, now, normally it is uh, a um, an automatic rifle, fully automatic. But in this game, it is actually a semi-automatic rifle. So it's a single shot, but it does have a higher uh, damage rating uh, than the, uh, the than the previous gun, the C8 SFW. Um, so that's a damage at 52, so theoretically, now it doesn't always work out like this, but theoretically you could get a two-shot body oh, shot. Um, what I'm uh, thinking this is going to end up being is uh, um, a couple of body shots, and then the third one might land on the head if your accuracy is, uh, is good enough. Um, so it only has a 20-round uh, magazine, but that should be enough to drop uh, three or four guys. Um, the recoil pattern, though, you can see is actually quite nasty. Um, so you're going to want to toss a compensator on there to bring the recoil pattern a little bit back into uh, in, into uh, perspective. Uh, so it'll be a little bit easier to handle. All right. So the second operator, uh, codenamed Frost, uh, she is actually uh, a little bit more interesting. Now I say this because her gadget, uh, it's called a, a welcome mat. Now they state it as uh, it's a mechanical trap used to capacitate enemies. Now, what this means is that it is not vulnerable to the EMP grenades of uh, IQ. I believe it's IQ. Um, now, this is going to be interesting because is it going to be like a trap that you put on the other side of a door uh, so that when they breach through, or a window actually, so when they jump in through the window, they land in the trap. Um, now, it says incapacitate enemies, so what I'm thinking is it'll just down them. So it's like one of their teammates can go and pick them up again. Uh, but it won't necessarily kill them, uh, although there is the, the, the bleed out function, so that might be a possibility there, where uh, you can down them, and then uh, and then they, they sit and bleed out. So that's interesting, because this is one of the only gadgets um, that will not be affected by an EMP grenade, because lots of the other ones are very technological. Um, they do have, uh, like they do run on batteries, uh, sort of thing. 
Um, so IQ won't be able to see it, and uh, they won't be able to destroy. Uh, they won't be able to um, be destroyed using an EMP grenade, which makes her a little bit more interesting. Now, for her primary weapons, God damn. Uh, she does have a uh, a super 90 uh, 12 gauge pump action oh, shotgun. Yes, um, now it is it doesn't have a shoulder rest. It, it is a little bit of a smaller rifle, so uh, you can see the recoil pattern in the bottom. Uh, makes it makes me assume that the that the spray pattern for this rifle will be rather large. Um, I'm assuming it won't be as accurate as uh, some of the other shotguns at longer ranges. Um, it does only have uh, an eight round clip, so assuming your accuracy is 50%, that's enough for, for four kills um, if you place the shots correctly. Um, now, another thing uh, is uh, it is a little bit of a lighter shotgun, so it's got a little bit higher mobility than some of the other ones. Um, and other than that, uh, I feel like the, the more interesting point is the, the second gun. Um, this is the 9mm C1 submachine gun. Uh, this gun is actually designed uh, and implemented in World War II. Kind of interesting. So it is a little bit of an older rifle. Um, it does have a higher uh, magazine capacity than like a, like an MP5 or a, a UMP45. Um, so that'll allow for uh, one or two more uh, headshots if, uh, if you're accurate enough um, with this rifle. Um, the only nice. thing that I can see is that the fire rate is a little bit lower than some of the other rifles, meaning that you're going to need to get um, three or four or five shots off into someone before you can uh, take them down. And if they have a faster shooting rifle, uh, along with a netcode la latency, then you may or may not lose that, uh, that firefight. Uh, so I feel like with this rifle, accuracy is going to be a big thing. Um, and uh, with, a, with a slightly bigger magazine, uh, that'll uh, help you out as well. Now, she's got a, a deployable shield and a nitro cell as her, as her um, uh, uh, like a selectable gadgets, uh, as well as her mechanical, I'm just going to call it a bear trap, because that's probably what it is. Now, for the, uh, for, uh, the DLC map itself, um, it is uh, a yacht, as previously mentioned. Um, so it does look like there's going to be a little bit of vertical gameplay with two or three different floors as with the other maps. So kind of cool. So, uh, just to expand a little bit on these, uh, DLC seasons, as Ubisoft is calling them, uh, they are planned to be released at regular intervals no in the coming way. year. The first being February 2nd, which was delayed from the start of January, and then the Thank second you. being April, and then quarterly, so forth. Uh, so, seasons pass holders will be gaining access to these DLCs one week early, or in terms of this Black Ice DLC, that is tomorrow. So, but fear not, if you're like me and if you're surviving off uh, craft dinner and alcohol, then there is another way to gain access to these new operators. So for this explanation, I'm going to pull a quote from Ubisoft on the matter, and it says, Each expansion adds one new map and two new operators, each with a new unique gadget and new primary and secondary weapons. New game modes, cosmetic items, and in-game events will also be released during the year. While all maps and modes will be immediately available to all players, the new operators and weapon skins will need to be unlocked with Renown, which is earned while you play or purchased with R6 credits. Now, or also, there will be a number of premium weapon skins that can only be accessed with R6 credits. These are purely cosmetic, however, and won't affect gameplay. Oh, there's two. Now, this is fantastic news for uh, for the players. Now, this means that Ubisoft, oh, come on, uh, I'm going to uh, put up uh, this uh, Rainbow Six, Six Siege promise that Ubisoft has released, um, that it won't split the uh the the the, the players and it won't split the community because everyone will have access to the same stuff now albeit the people who don't have the seasons pass will have to grind for these operators as they are twenty five thousand renown apiece so it looks like i've got a lot of playing to do for the next week so there you have it guys those are the basics for the new dlc calendar and for the uh the new uh, dlc season black ice i am super excited to get my hands on these operators and these maps and i'm curious as to how the game will change based on their tactical advantages Whoa. so let me know in the comments down below what you guys think of this new uh dlc plan uh ubisoft's promised uh, to the to their community to to the to you the players and uh yeah Hit me up on Twitter. Uh, let me know what you guys think. Uh, I will be streaming on Twitch uh, every now and again. I haven't quite set it up yet, but I will be up there shortly. So thanks a lot for watching, guys. I will catch you guys in the next video.